In this video I'm going to show you how to use LT Spice to find the input impedance of a, a simulated circuit and then I'm going to design a matching circuit uh, so that the input impedance is 50 ohms using the Smith program. Right now I have a conventional simulation set up here. I have a sine wave of 100 MHz here as a source. It is AC coupled through the C1 uh, capacitor and goes to this uh, BFP405 uh, based uh, amplifier and I'm picking the output at the collector. So if I run it, uh, the usual stuff happens. We have our input signal here and our output signal right here. You can see that the output is generally higher in amplitude than the input. Now I would like this to have the input impedance of 50 ohms. It, it's not 50 ohms right now and I have to design a matching circuit so that it appears as 50 ohms uh, as seen from the input. Fortunately uh, you can simulate uh, the impedance in LT spice and I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we're going to run now is an S parameter simulation. Now when uh, characterizing a device uh, with multiple ports you do this port by port and you apply some test signal on one of the ports and you terminate all of the remaining ports with the system impedance. So uh, in this case we only have one remaining port which is the output and we're going to terminate it with 50 ohms which is our system impedance. We do this by simply putting a 50 ohm resistor to ground. Now in order to find the input impedance I need to measure the current and the voltage which is going into the input port. I'm going to do that by replacing this voltage source with a current source. And then I'm going to use the expression function of LT Spice to divide the voltage at this point by the current of this current source. Uh, I would also like to sweep this at different frequencies so that I can read off the value uh, at 100 MHz which is the frequency I am interested in. So we're going to run an AC simulation instead of a transient one and we simply do that by going uh, into the current source settings and entering some value as the AC amplitude. Now we're going to divide the current bus by the voltage so uh, it's going to be proportional. This value does not matter here uh, as long as it's set to AC uh, type simulation. Uh, I'm also going to change the simulation type here. So uh, we want to have an AC simulation as to 10 points per, uh, per decade. I'm going to, going to start the frequency at uh, 20 megahertz or 50 megahertz and end it at 200 megahertz. That way my frequency of interest which is uh, 100 megahertz is going to be right in the middle of the chart. Okay so with this in place we can rerun the simulation as an AC simulation and I'm going to and I'm going to edit this chart so that instead of showing me the voltage it shows me the voltage divided by the current which uh, is the impedance. I can right click this to get the expression editor and I just do Vn over I uh, I1. I1 is my current source. Uh, now I'm going to change the scale here to linear Cartesian and as you can see uh, what happened here is that the scale has changed and I have ohms on either sides of the chart. Now on this side I have the real part of ohms and this is this uh, solid curve and on the right hand side I have the imaginary part of the impedance and it's the dotted curve. I want to know the precise value so I can just click uh, on, uh, on, the, on the name of the curve and activate the cursors. 
And as you've noticed, I've set the limits of the simulation so that 100 MHz falls right in the middle of the scale, and this is where the cursor sits by default. With this data, I'm going to start the Smith program, and I'm going to put a point on the Smith chart. So uh, we have impedance Cartesian. Now our real impedance is 183, and our imaginary component is minus 180. Now, in order to uh, pick the uh, matching circuit for the frequency, I also need to correct the frequency here. We are operating at 100 megahertz. Otherwise, the values that Smith is going to pick are not going to be correct. At this point, uh, there are a couple options of uh, doing uh, the uh, matching circuit. Now Smith is nice because it's uh, an interactive program, so I'm just going to choose parallel inductance and I'm going to go up here to the uh, 50 ohm circle and I'm going to go with a series capacitor. With this I'm going to match it right in the middle of the Smith chart, which is 50 ohms uh, real. Okay, now I have my matching circuit calculated in the Smith program, and I'm going to copy it into my LT Spice simulation. Bearing in mind that Smith draws it the other way around, so in Smith I have the load on the left hand side and the source on the right hand side. My simulation schematic is drawn in the conventional way, so I have the sources on the left and the load, which is the amplifier, is on the right. Having this in mind, we go from the source and see that we have a 12.9 picofarad capacitor. So we're going to place it here. And then we have a series inductor, which I'm going to place here. Now we enter the values 12p9 uh, for the capacitor and 163.8 nano Henrys for the inductor, so 163n. Eight. Okay, mm. now if I rerun the simulation, you should see that uh, the impedance uh, changes. And you can see that we are quite close as our impedance is now 48.9 ohms real and the imaginary part is 82 uh, milli ohms. So this is close enough for what I need and generally. Uh, this uh, discrepancy from being spot on 50 ohms is because I was using my mouse to click on the Smith chart and this is uh, generally the, the reason why this is not 50 ohms spot on. And in the real world it will not be, it wouldn't be 50 ohms anyway because the components have some tolerances. There is one more thing I wanted to show you. Uh, and it is that if you have this chart, in this case this is for an unmatched circuit, you can export the data from this chart into a flat file that you can later load in into a, uh, for example, a Python script using scikit-rf. Uh, you do this by right-clicking on the chart and going File, Export Data as Text. Uh, you select the curves that you want to export and uh, one important uh, thing here is to change the format to Cartesian, which is real and imaginary. Otherwise, it's going to export in dB and uh, degrees, which is uh, somewhat less useful of a format. Now, when you click OK, uh, it's going to export that file. This is how the exported file looks like. As you can see, it's a pretty simple format. Uh, in the first column you have the frequency, and in the second column you have the complex impedance. So I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, on how to characterize uh, simulated circuits and how to design a matching circuit for a particular frequency. That's all for today, and thanks for watching.